cutting-edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. At a depth of five metres, the bright blue glow of uranium decay illuminates the nuclear core of the European Commission's Joint Research Centre reactor in Petten, northern Holland. What you see down there is um, our major working horse, uh, which is called the high flux reactor. So downstairs there is fuel producing 45 megawatts of uh, power. In nuclear fission, atoms are split apart to form smaller atoms, releasing energy. Nuclear power plants use fission to produce electricity. In research reactors such as the one in Petten, the chain reaction is being employed to conduct scientific studies. A few of the tubes that you see coming up from the reactor are the experimental facilities. And uh, they're typically five or six meters long. And the tubing contains all the instrumentation because we have to know temperatures and provide the right environment for the specimens uh, to be representative for the reactor environment. This is one of the first generation of research reactors built in the 60s, um, but currently it's I think one of the five top facilities in the world. Yap and his colleagues position specimens of different materials such as graphite, steel or innovative composites inside the research reactor's core to let them degrade in the extreme environment for a given amount of time. Irradiated examples are then transferred outside the reactor where they can be studied and tested in the so-called hot cells to check their behavior and evaluate sustained damage. Scientists need this knowledge to select a range of building materials for nuclear reactors of the future, which have to be much more efficient and clean than the aging power plants currently in use today. The nuclear park in Europe is uh, getting relatively old and now there are big plans to extend the life, but this will only bring further another 10, 15, 20 years uh, into life extension then. A big choice has to be made and uh, of course one of the most interesting ideas is to replace not with the same type of concept but more advanced concept like generation 4. The first prototype of the fourth generation system is due in 2020. Commercial operations expected to begin in 2040. Several competing technologies have been selected in order to form the basis of further research. They all have in common something, they are really improvement uh, compared to the previous generation and in particular they, have, uh, they rely heavily on passive safety systems so they, they rely less on, on human uh, skills to, to manage uh, potential safety events. They will also use better the resources, that is another point that should be mentioned. The reactors of today are in a sense not really sustainable for a very long time, they burn uranium in a simple way and only your uranium. What you need is a reactor that can breed their own fuel and can make the reserves that are today available uh, for a much longer span of time. Uranium reserves are limited and their rapid exhaustion is unavoidable if nuclear reactors continue to use only a tiny fraction of the energy potential of uranium, turning the rest into radioactive waste. A fourth generation reactor aims to recycle its fuel. It can potentially do much more. Today we are only extracting electricity out of the fuel uh, capacity of generating uh, power and we waste somehow the rest of the, of the power into warming up uh, water in, for rivers and, and seas. But there is a, an attempt in the, the new generation to use better directly the heat generated by the power plant to do other applications like gasifying coals or, or producing hydrogen which could be a vector for moving cars without emitting uh, CO2 to the atmosphere. Future reactors may be twice as hot as the ones in use today, which will allow the excess heat to power up secondary applications, such as producing clean hydrogen fuel by thermolysis, desalination of seawater, or even melting and extraction of yet unreachable semi-solid oil in bitumen sands. The research will gather momentum in the near future with the introduction of a new experimental reactor in Cadarache in France, when its construction is complete in 2014, scientists will be able to conduct dozens of irradiation experiments simultaneously. 
Here you have the construction site of the future, the research reactor Jules Horowitz, which several years from now will become a major element in European nuclear research. It's a reactor which is meant to support the future generations of reactors, Generation 3 and Generation 4, which we expect to see around 2040. This reactor will succeed the existing European reactors, which are about 40 years old and will cease operations in 10 years' time. Just like the Dutch research facility in Petten, the reactor in Kadarash will provide everything necessary and yet more materials for study under intensive irradiation. So, this is the profile model of the Jules Horowitz reactor and its nuclear appendices. Here at the centre of this pool, you have the reactor core, where about 20 experiments will be taking place simultaneously when the reactor becomes operational in six or seven years. It has a relatively small core size. The reactor's core measures 60 centimetres in diameter and 60 centimetres in height, basically a washing machine. But this reactor is very high density. It produces up to 100 megawatts, a considerable amount of power. And since we want to conduct 20 experiments simultaneously in different parts of the core, we need all these tubes and cables going there, and this 100 megawatt core needs cooling. It's a water circulation cooled reactor, and through these huge tubes, cold water is pumped in from below the core, and hot water is pumped out at the top of the reactor. We want to measure some physical phenomena directly, which is impossible to do in a power plant reactor. This research reactor is named after Jules Horowitz to honor the pioneer of reactor physics at the CEA. This reactor of research is called the reactor Jules Horowitz, so in homage to a pioneer of physics. He's the man who played an important role in the 1960s and 70s. He managed to found a group of scientists who were capable of calculating and verifying the right dimensions of a nuclear reactor's core and the ways to monitor and control it. He died in 1995, and so the research reactor of the 21st century carries his name. Today's studies are just the beginning of the road to the technological breakthrough essential to keep the nuclear industry sustainable, competitive and safe in a world where energy demands are continuing to rise.